Okay, we just have one more robot and we're done. No, big five. Ooh. Awesome. Yeah. How are you enjoying your time? Split. 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 our game analysis for strategy has changed very little. As we first stated, gears are more important than balls as they give you more points per item. It is therefore essential and relatively easy to implement a basic gear mechanism. You will need gears to be competitive, but they cannot win you the game. After gears, the climb is the next most important element for giving teams points. A revelation that we had was the importance of being able to pick up balls from the field. Once the side containers have been dumped, there could be 200 plus balls on the field that need to be picked up. This also shortens the robot's commute from where the ball is received to where it will be scored. With regard to shooting, the very best teams will develop a fast, efficient, and accurate shooter for the top goal, as this is the most efficient use of balls. However, it is difficult in regard to shooting implementation that leads us to believe that the majority of teams will implement a low goal scorer. The low goal has more strategic value because it allows for faster unloading with almost 100% accuracy, something you can't get with a top goal shooter, especially as soon as you add in contacting robots. Due to the large game pieces and restricted robot volume, we expect that how teams integrate different systems will be a key in this year's competition. We had to build two robots to highlight every aspect of the game in the allotted volume. It is our belief that the best teams will be able to do this in one. We are part of the team that was working on our shooter slash gear collector robot. Him and I were part of the team working mainly on the shooter. This is a basic holding tank pipe of the loading station. It is optimal for holding and storing multiple balls. The main part of this design is a gradual funnel shape towards a hole large enough for one ball at a time. This allows free flow travel into the shooter mechanism while limiting only sort of jamming that may occur. For the shooter mechanism itself, we base the whole thing around a box-like frame which held our track for the main part as well as the motors. The track was made out of curved Lexan and it form fitted in an arc. An index wheel was the first, first wheel that came in contact with the ball. It holds back balls and feeds one ball or multiple balls at a time. It also instantly accelerates the ball into the shooter or flywheel ball. This creates an easier flow of balls through the whole mechanism. As the ball took off, we had to balance the compression, the motor speed, and the angle of tangency to determine where the ball was shooting. We used a 6-inch rubber wheel as a flywheel, and we found this was not optimal for us as it lessened our traction on the ball and surface area and could cause the ball to go off aim. We found that less compression was usually better as it avoided too much tension in the system and kept it moving steadily without jams. It works as a passive and a secure mag mechanism for the gear. With this simple design, it allows the robot to drive towards the spring on the tower, pedal the gear, and let the human player lift the gear up. Afterwards, the robot just backs away and continues with play. The mechanism that I worked on is designed to climb up the rope. This works on being powered by a gearbox which has a 56 to 1 ratio and produces lots of torque to lift up the heavy weight of the robot off the ground. As you can see, the rope is knotted at one end and catches onto the climb mechanism which reels the free rope into the system and results in the climbing action of the robot. Also, to increase the chances of the rope catching, more blades were added to the shaft of the climb mechanism. Two things that we had to consider during this process was the center of gravity and the mounting of this device. The climb mechanism determines the center of gravity of the robot. This mechanism had to be properly mounted to make sure that the connections don't fit. But we worked on the second robot, uh, the one that contained the climber and the ball collector. We primarily worked on the ball collector component. We finished working on the ball collector system, which now stores an amount of balls collected by the spinetti and dumps them into the logo. A motor is used to spin the mechanism that collects the balls and transfers them into the storage. A screen obstructs the balls and pneumatic pistons are used to raise the screen. The balls are then free to fall into the logo. 
This project was a huge success. Well, we were able to complete most of the mechanisms required by the challenge. We'd like to thank our sponsors, uh, Scouts Canada, Andy Marks, SolidWorks, and Rev Robotics. Thank you for the support from Team 5097 Apex Robotics, as well as the First Robotics Society of Calgary. We really look forward to seeing what other first teams in Calgary and across the world can do in the full six weeks. Happy robot building!